In this video, I'm going to show you how our products support the double bind character set. So you can have all different languages, Chinese, Japanese, Korean, or even all the European languages. I'm going to start from a spreadsheet, which has got Chinese and Japanese uh, book data character data set in it. So I've got an ISBN number down the side here. And here I've got a, a description of uh, the book title with Chinese characters, or down the bottom here, some Japanese characters too. I'll just close that. Do the same as I did before. I have a, an iRoot script, which is basically just going to upload that file to the iSeries. What if I select it? So I've pointed it to that file in folder DBCS, Chinese and Japanese. And it's exactly the same as we've done before, nothing different at all. Just select the, select the two fields. I'm going to write it to a table called China, Japan in library DBCS data. Those are the two fields I'm going to get it to write out. Save it as a uh, script to China and Japan. We just click run immediately. Like I said, this is nothing different to before. I'm just trying to show you <laughs> that the concept is exactly the same. <laughs> Not very good to be needed there. Okay, then I run the script. So this is reading the uh, Excel spreadsheet and uploading the data to the I series. I just flick over to iRoot on the I series, going to option 11, uploads awaiting processing. And there it is, my Chinese and Japanese, exactly the same as before. Just put one next to it, process that data. And if I go into the upload history, it's uploaded 43 rows into my file called China Japan in library DBCS data. So the easiest way to look at the data is in uh, one of our Shelby websites. I've just put a very simple inquiry down at the bottom here called test. What this is going to do is present all that DBCS data, all the Chinese and Japanese data, in a subfile within a web page so I can actually maintain it. So this is displaying to me all the uploaded data. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to update this first record here. Now I don't know how to key Chinese Japanese characters. What I've done is I've pasted into my clipboard uh, some data using Google Translate. And it's actually the Chinese for first edition, I believe. So I just do Control V. That will put that into that record in the subfile on the web page. And if I just go down the bottom and click update, that will actually update the iSeries table now using Show Me Plus with the data that I've entered into the page, the first edition. And just to prove the point, if I just go to an, uh, another inquiry and go back and reload the data, go to test. So it's reloaded the data from the iSeries file now. And there you are. You probably know better than me whether that says first edition or not, but I believe it does. <laughs> Okay, now to complete the cycle, we've uploaded the data using our route, we've maintained it on a Shelby web page. Now I'm going to show you how you can download the data to different formats as well. So just close my browser there, go back to the iSeries. And we do this, as you know, with our Route 1 product. So we're going to Route 1. Going to my definition for China, Japan. This is going to read the file we've just updated. Again, nothing we haven't seen before. Standard definition, specify the files, file channel, Japan, and library DBCS data, and select the two fields that I want to know. Route 1 doesn't need to know that it's um, double byte character set data. It, can, it knows that from the file when it, when it creates the definition, when it reads it. So then go to the transfer request, C H I N A J A P A N. Again, I'm just going to call it. Japan, and I'm going to first, start, first of all start off by putting it into an Excel X spreadsheet. Okay, so if I run that now, one client. Go over to my remote server. There's the root one client. It's actually it's not, sorry, that's the, that's the this PCI root script generator. We go open up my root one client. Restore. That's where now actually at 1052 it's just built that data. So it's loaded those 43 rows into an Excel spreadsheet. If I click view last file, that will open the file with the Chinese, and, you know, the double white carry set data in. And there's the uh, row that I updated right at the very, very top there. Doesn't have to be Excel. Route one will support all the different formats in double white character set. i just go and change that now to say, let's have an, uh, an MDB this time. Just resend it, don't need to build the file. Come back here. Now again, it's rebuilt, it's rebuilt this time converted to an access database. Now you'll see 
it's an access database too. Let's go over here, open the table. There you are. Exactly the same data. Oops. Try and drag that across. We hardly can't see the cursor properly. <laughs> With the updated data on the first row. And just as a final example, I'll load it into SQL. So I'll go back to my i series. And in this example here, what I'm going to do now is just say down here, let's bring to a SQL Server database. And one thing I can do, um, I can override the field types. No, my definition is it's defaulted to the field types from the file, it's alpha, numeric, whatever. What I can do is override them. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to override them to a format called DF, which means double byte fix. So I'm telling the SQL Server to create fields with double byte characters here. So if I just resend that down now, 11 to send. Back to my room one client. See, now it's downloading the SQL Server, 43 rows again. If I open up the SQL Server Management Studio, the bottom here, Going to databases, going to China Japan, which is the one it's just created. Into tables. Now my table's called Sheet One because that's where I left it from. We call it an Excel spreadsheet. I just click Sheet One there, right click and say, show me the top thousand rows. This will show me the data down the bottom here. This is just re-uploaded. There you are. See the updated data that we uploaded through through Show Me Plus. So that really completes the cycle. We can upload data with iRoot, irrespective of whether it's dual byte current set or not. We can maintain it with Show Me and Show Me Plus on the web page, and then we can download the data to any format that we like on the PC.